Good morning. <laughs> Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 150. In mercy, in goodness, how great is our King. Our tribute, thanksgiving, with glad hearts we bring. Thou art the renewer, the ancient of days, who givest for mourning the garment of praise. Hymn number 150. Scriptural will be given by Dale from Virginia. Psalm 31. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 49. Dear Lord and Father of us all, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In pure lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. Hymn number 49.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion where we talk about this week's lesson and other topics that need to be covered and where we learn to practice better Christian science. And we had another really good one this morning. So if you missed it, or if you'd like to hear it again, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And will also be available on our YouTube channel and our Vimeo channel. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 every Sunday morning. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number, Many of our students don't live in the area and attend by telephone. And that means that if you don't attend, uh, live in the area, if I'd have a child of Sunday school age, your child can attend by a telephone. Just call us, we'll give you the number. And our teachers would be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives radically saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. If you decide to come in person, bring the whole family. We have... Uh, 17 different websites in different languages, and that is our outreach. And each of our websites contains the very finest Christian science literature. And everything that we offer on our websites is offered free of charge. You can read, listen, download, print, anything that is on any of our websites free of charge. Freely we have received, and freely do we give. And that is our outreach. And as a result of that, many people throughout the world have found the truth of Christian science in their own language. And many of you have found our church through our websites, and we're very grateful for that. And don't forget, we also have a children's website. And that you can find on the front of our English website under Quick Links. One of the links is the children's website. So if you do have a child that knows how to use the computer, good idea to train them to find the children's website. On that website, they will find everything that children need to learn at an early age. And featured on our English language website is an article I'd like to point out and recommend. A great article entitled, The Art of Being Glad by Bicknell Young. Good article. I recommend it highly. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will now be given by Tom from Iowa. A restless sense of existence destroyed. Through reading science and health and the illumination which followed, I was healed of ulceration of the stomach and kindred troubles. A restless sense of existence, agnosticism, etc. The torture I endured was a stomach trouble I will not attempt to describe. The attending physician declared that I could live but a short time, and I felt there would be a limit to my endurance of the torture but the disease was dissipated into nothingness through Christian science, which brought me peace. Like many others, I had been seemingly lost in the sea of error without a compass, 
yet earnestly and honestly seeking a haven. I had investigated all kinds of religions and philosophies that came under my notice, with the exception of Christian science, which was not then deemed worthy of inquiry, and yet it held the very truth I was searching for, the light which shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Three years of stubborn resistance to truth, with increasing suffering, followed. Then the light came, and with it a new experience. Now, after nine years of Christian science experience, under severe tests, it can be truthfully said that it has not failed me in any hour of need. Day FJ, Cincinnati, Ohio. The Bible and the Christian Science Textbook are our only preachers. The scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our textbook, these comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their denominational spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated or fettered by human hypotheses, and authorized by Christ. And today's lesson sermon can be found on page 10 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Everlasting Punishment. The golden text is from Isaiah. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And the responsive reading is from Isaiah and Psalms. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him Return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Elizabeth from Georgia will now read. The Bible, Isaiah, thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. 
Genesis. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren, and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. John Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Matthew Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Second Chronicles For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful 
and will not turn away his face from you, if ye return unto him. Psalm Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good, and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. 1 Corinthians There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Matthew Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Bruce will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook. Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The science of Christianity comes with fan in hand to separate the chaff from the wheat. Science will declare God aright, and Christianity will demonstrate this declaration and its divine principle, making mankind better physically, morally, and spiritually. Let the wicked forsake his way, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. Christian science rises above the evidence of the corporeal senses. But if you have not risen above sin yourself, do not congratulate yourself upon your blindness to evil or upon the good you know and do not. A dishonest position is far from Christianly scientific. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Jesus' prayer, forgive us our debts, specified also the terms of forgiveness. When forgiving the adulterous woman, he said, go and sin no more. Vibrating like a pendulum between sin and the hope of forgiveness, selfishness and sensuality causing constant retrogression, our moral progress will be slow. Waking to Christ's demand, mortals experience suffering. This causes them, even as drowning men, to make vigorous efforts to save themselves. And through Christ's precious love, these efforts are crowned with success. Every pang of repentance and suffering, every effort for reform, every good thought and deed 
will help us to understand Jesus' atonement for sin and aid its efficacy. But if the sinner continues to pray and repent, sin and be sorry, he has little part in the atonement, in the at one with God, for he lacks the practical repentance which reforms the heart and enables man to do the will of wisdom. Those who cannot demonstrate, at least in part, the divine principle of the teachings and practice of our Master have no part in God. If living in disobedience to Him, we ought to feel no security, although God is good. There is no hypocrisy in science. Principle is imperative. You cannot mock it by human will. Science is a divine demand, not a human. Always right, its divine principle never repents, but maintains the claim of truth by quenching error. The pardon of divine mercy is the destruction of error. If men understood their real spiritual source to be all blessedness, they would struggle for recourse to the spiritual and be at peace. But the deeper the error into which mortal mind is plunged, the more intense the opposition to spirituality, till error yields to truth. Courts and juries judge and sentence mortals in order to restrain crime, to prevent deeds of violence, or to punish them. To say that these tribunals have no jurisdiction over the carnal or mortal mind would be to contradict precedent and to admit that the power of human law is restricted to matter, while mortal mind, evil, which is the real outlaw, defies justice and is recommended to mercy. Can matter commit a crime? Can matter be punished? Can you separate the mentality from the body over which courts hold jurisdiction? Mortal mind, not matter, is the criminal in every case. And human law rightly estimates crime and courts reasonably pass sentence according to the motive. There is neither a present nor an eternal co-partnership between error and truth, between flesh and spirit. God is as incapable of producing sin, sickness, and death as he is of experiencing these errors. How then is it possible for him to create man subject to this triad of errors, man who is made in the divine likeness? Does God create a material man out of himself, spirit? Does evil proceed from good? Does divine love commit a fraud on humanity by making man inclined to sin and then punishing him for it? Would anyone call it wise and good to create the primitive and then punish its derivative? If materialistic knowledge is power, it is not wisdom. 
It is but a blind force. Man has sought out many inventions, but he has not yet found it true that knowledge can save him from the dire effects of knowledge. The power of mortal mind over its own body is little understood. Better the suffering which awakens mortal mind from its fleshly dream than the false pleasures which tend to perpetuate this dream. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, said Jesus. A careful study of this text shows that here the word soul means a false sense or material consciousness. The command was a warning to beware, not of Rome, Satan, nor of God, but of sin. Sickness, sin, and death are not concomitants of life or truth. No law supports them. They have no relation to God wherewith to establish their power. Sin makes its own hell, and goodness its own heaven. The destruction of sin is the divine method of pardon. Divine life destroys death, truth destroys error, and love destroys hate. Being destroyed, sin needs no other form of forgiveness. Does not God's pardon destroying any one sin prophesy and involve the final destruction of all sin? Who that has felt the loss of human peace has not gained stronger desires for spiritual joy. The aspiration after heavenly good comes even before we discover what belongs to wisdom and love. The loss of earthly hopes and pleasures brightens the ascending path of many a heart. The pains of sense quickly inform us that the pleasures of sense are mortal and that joy is spiritual. The pains of sense are salutary if they wrench away false pleasurable beliefs and transplant the affections from sense to soul where the creations of God are good rejoicing the heart. Such is the sword of science with which truth decapitates error, materiality giving place to man's higher individuality and destiny. The time approaches when mortal mind will forsake its corporeal structural, and material basis, when immortal mind and its formations will be apprehended in science, and material beliefs will not interfere with spiritual facts. Man is indestructible and eternal. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 253. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain, low, sad, and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith and breathed in raptured song with love perfumed. Hymn number 253.
Let's now sing hymn number 283. Praise we the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Let us extol him with joyous and loving endeavor. Come, let us sing, praising our God and our King. Should we be silent? Ah, never. Hymn number 283.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, the scientific statement of being, and the correlative passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter, or its infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Psalm. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. Amen.